Hello, everybody. Welcome to Quantum Witch Cafe. And I have the pleasure of hosting Mr. Max Moskowitz right now, whose name I decided to butcher in my schedule. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of letters in it. It's all right. My maiden name Salazar, and people always like jack it up. So, yeah. so I have Max on because he's somebody that brings a lot to the UIP community. And he's also been pretty like welcoming to people that aren't, you know, um, previously experienced in the field of reporting and such. So I feel like I feel comfortable talking to him and Vinny and, and Sean, because they are, even though, you know, you have, you know, Max, you, you have like the professional experience, you're still, you're not full of yourself. So I really like that. And I just want to talk about UAP today and yes, maybe some other yes. weird stuff. So you had sure. Truth Seeker on last and I was like, that guy's freaking amazing. That interview was like, like everything he said, I was like, I need to talk to this guy. So after I saw your interview, I didn't catch it live. But after that, I was like messaging him, like, I need you on because like nobody wants to talk about the weird apocrypha, biblical, um, like meets like ET meets angel thing. So yeah. he agreed to come on in November. So I'm pretty excited oh, about that. <laughs> awesome. Well, I loved I loved that interview with the uh, truth seeker. He um he brings something completely different to the table, but very, very interesting, very philosophical. Yeah. Um yeah, you don't have to agree with everything he says, but it's worth listening to, you know? It's um, really fascinating. Yeah, I love that guy. He's great. Yeah, and his music's really cool, too. I hadn't realized that I actually heard his music. Like, I've heard his songs um, on, you know, some other, like, there's some other spiritual modalities that people, oh, you got, like, playlists, you know what I mean? Like, listen to this playlist. It has spiritual stuff, and he's on there. So when I went to his playlist, I was like, oh, wow, like, I've heard his songs before. And he's got, like, a good lightning message sometimes we find hip-hop can be a little you know like tna hose and you know, <laughs> dry, you know? Yeah, yeah 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 it's a uh, it's nice to see somebody that's talking about yeah. um you know their spirit and their relationship to the creator and all that so yeah, i thought it was yeah. cool so thank you for having him on because now i might get to have a conversation that i've been trying to have with people that nobody will talk about even pastors like people that are supposed to know the bible they're kind of like, yeah. oh, well, that's weird. I'm like, but it's in the Bible. What does it mean? They're like, well, the word of God is the word of God. And they just leave it there. They don't want to have a conversation. And, you know, like I, I may be too deep of a thinker and I want to know more about everything. So, yeah, yeah, I think. Truth excited Seeker, to yeah, yeah. By the way, his music is incredible. He's really good. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I just, you know, uh, I find his <clears throat> uh, unique style. I like it. You know, he's, he looks very. Uh, yeah, he looks like a, a tough guy, um, but then uh, he's very, um, how do you say this, kind, he's yeah. a kind soul, you know, and uh, very compassionate, very, <clears throat> he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very amazing uh, individual, and he's very productive too, he writes books, he, he makes hip hop, uh, he uh, has his own uh, podcast, uh, which is great. Yeah, I'll I just downloaded it. it yesterday, because I was like, I need to listen to this guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll be on his on his show the November fourth. Oh, cool! Good to know because I I had to download them for the car and all that. But it's the podcast on Spotify is actually really great for people that are like in the car a lot. So I'm obviously like in the car with my kids. They're going doing school and soccer now. So I'm like a soccer mom running around getting food, doing all that stuff. So I had to have something on podcast because YouTube won't stay connected in the car. So okay. and I'm not paying for the premium to do that. If Spotify is going to do it, so. <laughs> So yeah. I do have a question about you now. Um, sure. So you had mentioned that you're kind of like the only person right now, or you were the only person when you started reporting on this phenomena. Has that changed at all in your country? Like, are more people kind of picking up on it and following your lead? Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely much more now. Uh, not a lot. <clears throat> but um, whatever comes out now is still usually copy-pasted from American media. Yeah. Um, and I still miss uh, like journalists uh, approaching people like Lou Elizondo, Sean Cahill, uh, Senator Reid, uh, you know, the key players in the in the disclosure uh, traject uh, to to actually interview them. Yeah. And lo actually look at, at at our country, too, because uh, there's there's stuff here, too, you know, to to yeah. investigate. But um, it, it, it's getting like it, it's more it's more the big newspaper started uh, writing about it and um yeah i have good hopes uh, and probably a little bit more competition <laughs> yeah i don't know so. I feel like you're gonna nail it because you're gonna be like the expert like they're gonna come to you if they need help with anything do you know what i mean because 
you've oh, they did. so many people. And then on top yeah. of that, you did um, other types of investigative journaling, right? And yeah, you did yeah. documentaries and which the one like that you did with your dad, just like, it was super cool. I have questions about that, but I'm going to try and stay sure. with my bullet point so I don't go off on a tangent. Um, you know how that is. <laughs> Let's wing it. Let's wing but it. I, Come on. It's like, a, I just think it's cool that so many people that are kind of doing this now kind of have like a similar past. Like I've met so many people that were kind of like party animals in the day. And then now they're just trying to like bring a message that's a little more grounded. To, I guess it's not really grounded if it's UIP, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just interesting to see everybody's story and I'm in love with people's stories. So I love, maybe I'm just nosy, but like, I just love hearing like people's life. Like how did they start and what did they go through to make them the amazing person today? So that's why I really liked your documentary because you kind of get the big picture. Like we see like Max and we see him doing all these badass interviews. He's hanging out with Lou. He's doing this. He's doing that. Um, you know, the dad thing, the reporter thing, the UFO thing. Um, and then you're bringing up all these cases from, you know, Europe that people have not heard of because everything's been so USA centric, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I love seeing that because it makes you more real. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, sure. And it's just, I don't know. I just enjoy seeing how people have developed in their lifetime. I'm just a weirdo. So, <laughs> so no, thanks no, for like it, always it, being so upfront and an awesome documentary, sharing your story and your father's story. Very deep and very um, little teary eyed for me at times. I was like, like, you know, like, it's like, it's like, it touches you and then it pulls you out and then it touches your heart and then it pulls you out of your heart. It's just, it's so anyways, it was really good. Um, so how was that transition for you when you first started becoming public with uh, covering UAP and how long have you been doing that exactly? Well, <laughs> good question. Um, <clears throat> I've tried to cover it uh, way earlier than I got to do, uh, but uh, like every media platform I was freelancing for they just uh, they 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 just said no no we're not going to cover that it's for uh, aluminium foil hat people <laughs> it's, uh, the the crazies it's it's uh, you know uh, uh, conspiracy theory it's 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 uh, you know science fiction basically so um, especially when the New York Times article dropped in 2017 where the Pentagon you know released through the New York Times um, yeah, that's when I really started nagging my editor in chief uh, for, for yeah, uh, from one certain magazine, the New Review magazine, where which I eventually got to cover the, the subject. But uh, he he yeah declined. He didn't want it in. But then uh, he got fired, and uh, nice. the new guy yeah, no, he was a good guy by the way. But, oh, I know. I'm just saying like yeah, for uh, you know for the yeah. But uh, then the new the the new editor in chief he was like. Uh, because this was like in the in the the heat of the moment, you know, the the 180 day ultimatum uh, uh, was there, and I said, okay, so please let me jump in this, uh, so I can, you know, uh, pull this through. I, I, we want to see what's coming out at the end of the ultimatum, and I got to uh, write three full uh, editions on UAP <laughs> consecutively which was amazing. That's freaking cool. That's like everybody's dream. I think that's a reporter in this field. You know, you see people putting so much work in and like Christina, Chrissy Newton, everybody at the debrief. And I feel like they're at a level that other people aspire to be at. Like me, I don't want to be a reporter. Like, I don't know how to do that. Um, I yeah. have a lot of questions, but they're not like reporter type questions. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, I just, I think that you're kind of living the dream when it comes to the UIP stuff, because people really respect you and you're having all these guests and you seem to have like a connection with your guests that some do not. I feel like everybody that comes on your show is just so comfortable with you. So yeah. you must just have good vibes in general. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I try to make people at ease, uh, comfortable. Uh, but then again, you know, there, there's a difference in a uh, approach. It depends on who I have as a guest. Uh, when I have someone like uh, Mr. Elizondo or Mr. Reed, I, I get extremely prepared. Um, you know, I, I'll be working on questions for, for weeks and, um, uh, I'll, I'll be very zoomed in on, on, on individuals who are extremely important for disclosure and who are key players. But then I have interviews with, uh, uh cool people like yourself and, uh, it's more of a conversation in a bar or uh, at the kitchen table, uh, yeah. uh, it's more like, you know, you know, you get to get to a talk shop with like minds and, um, you know, I, I try to don't, 
I don't take myself too seriously, even when I do a, a, a heavyweight. Uh, but, you know, I, I always, you know, try to make it a very, uh, you know, it, it has to be a little bit of fun too, you know, you don't have to, you know, grind people <laughs> all the time. Yeah, you have to be yourself because there's so many people putting that like image out, like I'm a serious reporter. They act like this, you know what I mean? I think the people that are, like you that are kind of breaking that and showing yourself again more as like a person not so much this like face on screen just like yeah. spitting out facts and you even got avi Loeb to kind of crack a smile between you and josh blushing and you know like it was <laughs> because i've seen interviews with him and he's very like same answer very professional but i again you got him to warm up so yeah. um you have like yeah. the thing that makes people comfortable <laughs> yeah the, the, yeah the, the thing with avi was um you know I, I did see him think, who is this guy asking all these really um, sometimes make make a make a very cheeky joke? And he was like, what is he doing? I saw it in his eyes. Right. But uh, yeah, it, eventually he, he warmed up to it. And uh, he, I think he enjoyed himself. I think so, too. He looked like he had, you know, he looked comfortable. Um, he didn't look like yeah. he was having to like um, I feel like a lot of times with him, he's been so attacked in the scientific community, you know? So yeah. I think he probably automatically goes on a show and says, I have to be this certain way, or it's not gonna, you know, people, nobody's gonna listen. And a lot of people are doing that right now. Like a lot of people are afraid to be themselves. They wanna be like, you know, the nuts and bolts UFO person. But at the same right. time, like we have enough of that. We have enough people in mainstream media just being like news spitting robots. We need more real people doing it. Like, like Vinny and yourself, you know, Christina, Everybody on the debrief, basically, you know, they seem like they're personable people. And I think yeah. that maybe that's just me. I want to I want to take my news from somebody that I think is an actual person versus being told what to do by some major news network. <laughs> yeah, I, yes. I, I do think uh, we are <clears throat> people like uh, uh, me, Vinny, Sean, uh, Luis, Jimenez, uh, Christina, Gomez. Uh, there, There's many more. Um, are actually, I think, more important uh, uh, for covering UAP disclosure than mainstream media because they are very, uh, how do you call this, uh, dependent on what they get to say. You know, they, they they cannot just go all in like we do. You know, uh, with a, with a blank mind, uh, open mind. I mean, uh, they they're always there's always some kind of a flag they have to wave. You know, uh, yeah. ideologically or left right uh that's that's the problem so it's people like us uh who are doing uh you know our own research uh are talking to the right people um you know we we are actually making more progress in covering uap than uh, mainstream media and once in a while they actually have to come to us uh, i've had that in holland for example um the equivalent of <clears throat> BBC News, basically, or CNN uh, in Holland, they had to approach me to uh, ask Lou for an interview. They had no idea how to get to him. <laughs> so they were like, yeah, can you please you send an email yeah. for us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lou got uh, got to have an, uh, a big interview on uh, on the biggest news uh, uh, program in uh, in my country. That's awesome. I think it's good that, you know, they, they'll, you guys will, like, bring them in and bring them in in a good way, in an honest way. You're not going to give them any crap. So the whole Lou thing, has your relationship changed with like other people? Do you find more people approaching you more to try to get to him? Or are people just kind of like the same as they were? Um, no, look, whenever um, I really dig someone and uh, if they want to have Lou on, you know, uh, they, I always say, just ask. That's it. And if I think, uh, you know, you, you are a real good, uh, you're, you're a good person, a good, um, if you deserve to talk to Lou, I'll, I'll hook you up. That's what I always do for anyone, you know, um, and uh, I'm not going to name any names, but, you know, you know oh, who you God. are and you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, they're, uh, yeah, he seems like such a cool guy, like um, in general. I, yeah. you know, I'm an army wife, so I understand like a little bit of the sacrifice that he did even prior to this and to add, extend his duty further, you know what I mean? Um, by doing what he's done for the, the subject and honestly for the world, I mean, San Marino 
you went to San Marino to see this really, it's, it was kind of like, I feel like it was like a first time because we've had, there is conventions, but I think that it sounds like this is the first time that so many renowned people came together and presented this as if it was like an actual scientific conference. It was. So what was like the cool, what was that like being there? Like, what was the coolest thing that you learned that you can share? Or like, what did you, what did you learn that kind of like blew your mind that maybe you didn't think of before? Uh, um, what blew my mind? Well, what blew my mind uh, was all the uh, officials from several countries uh, coming down to San Marino and talking uh, UAP disclosure and, uh, you know, how to proceed uh, to, to get more countries uh, being involved and uh, creating awareness. And I, I didn't expect that, right? And uh, it was very much focused on getting scientists uh, to pull their weight and it is happening they're they're doing a great job and now you see that um from different countries uh secret services um uh, officials scientists are coming together and you know people are now uh talking to each other and you know trying to uh you know get this thing uh, going and uh, and look for the for the truth what 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 the hell is it that's awesome so was there a lot of like um like talk about like Kind of like theoretical physics at there at all like how we think that they're that these uh i guess craft are moving or was there just kind of like there wasn't a lot too much of that sort of science like uh, i know a lot of people want to know about the aviation of them which i don't think you would call it aviation but you know the how it propels through and does these insane maneuvers at insane speeds yeah there wasn't real talking <clears throat> about um how these things um, move around with a, with the, without a propulsion system and and where they're from, etc. But there was a lot of talk about using new technology, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, to actually separate the real UIP from a balloon or uh, an army tent or a, 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 a drone, you know, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and and actually, Lou demonstrated that uh, during the lecture, which was pretty cool yeah that is pretty cool so i did have a, i know that Vinny's going to have him on and talk to him about the ai stuff but is it looking do you know if it's looking for like certain things like um obviously the observables would it be able to recognize that and yeah. how is it calibrated like do they put like legit sightings into the program and then it learns from there or, or do you have any idea yeah about yeah it's like raising a child to become uh, uh an adult so the AI systems have to be raised, you know, they have to recognize uh, all kinds of shapes. And uh, yeah, this is going to take a while. It's going to cost a lot of their money. So they're, you know, they, they are trying to get funds. Um, but, you know, they, they have a very clear idea on where to start and where to start is what I just mentioned to, to separate what is explainable and what is UAP. And I think that's for now the most important, right? Yeah. So if you can register uh, UAP all the time in a while, um, then you can actually get to investigate the UAP. Uh, you know, how does it move? How does it tick? Where is it? Is it from? Uh, what does it want? <clears throat> what is it looking yeah. for? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a it's such an expansive topic. Like it's not just what are they? It's like the security, like the homeland security of many of all countries that have seen them. It's the kind of like paradigm shifting aspect of no, like you're not alone. Cause most people will be like, how are we alone with all these planets, you know, Drake equation and all this stuff. But it's just, when you sit down at the end of the night, you're like, this is, this encompasses like almost every aspect of our psyche and life. Like we've got the technology too, that the potential technology that we can use and hopefully, you know, create more of like free energy possibly. We got the, the anti-gravity technology that is just, yeah. Are we even going to understand it? And then we have like potential beings that they might be from another dimension, which is backed up by physics theories, right? The many worlds theory and other ones. And are they both like, are they in physicality in another dimension, but then projecting some sort of consciousness here to operate the vehicles? Right. And then obviously yeah. the least, you know, the impressive or the, to me, like I want them to be from somewhere else because that's so exciting. But like, what if they're us? Like what if they, or what if they've grown with us on this planet, but somewhere else? Cause we see all these by the ocean. Um, and there's been so many sites, more and more people are coming 
forward with these, uh, you know, sightings on the coast of uh, the United States. I don't. Are you seeing a lot of that in your country or in the neighboring countries? What USO? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have heard. Uh, yeah, there, there were accounts, um, but in in Europe, it's not a big thing. I I uh, I feel. Um, I, I don't hear too much about it actually. It's it's usually in in my part of the world the most uh, UAP that is being seen is usually uh, triangle um, or orbs. Yeah. Yeah, the orbs like uh, seem to be kind of like making a like making themselves known even during the daytime. Um, I feel like if I go out there and I look for. Now this is going to get into like the you know meditation stuff that a lot of people don't mm -hmm. like like if i do the meditation with intent and i start videoing the sky with my phone because i don't have like real stuff but you know and it's for me anyway like i don't think i'm going to get some badass like ship landing <laughs> and i think even if it did it'd probably break my phone with the frequencies or mm -hmm. something but you know um i can guarantee that if i go out there and put the intention out i'm going to see something and right. usually during the time same like during the daytime it's those little like white orbs or some people call them light ships um so it's super crazy in the triangle i saw a triangle when i was driving through the desert when one of my first trips where my mom let me like travel from arizona to california right and i was the only one awake like my friend's uncle was driving her, her mom was asleep she was asleep and i'm looking out in the desert like a weirdo and i see this like triangle thing like spinning they're all like every time i see like a triangle formation it's like spinning for some reason but Right. I was like, that is not like the separate three that I saw before. This is like a ship. And I was like, oh, my God, you guys see that? And they're, they're like, what? What are you talking about? And he's like, I'm driving. I didn't see anything. And I'm just like, there's something out there. But I kind of dropped it because, you know, previous experience says people are going to tell you you're lying. They're going to think you're a weirdo and <laughs> all that stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, that, that's that that's changing, though. You know, it really uh, is. Yeah. Of course, the, the majority of people will still uh you know the, it, it it's scared you know the unknown is scared it can be true uh, i'm gonna stick to what i know uh and whatever you are saying means you're crazy uh <laughs> but <laughs> but, it, but it's also kind of uh you know uh narrow-minded and and you know lazy actually yeah it really is because you have to take everything into consideration like everything's yeah. still on the table right like we don't really know anything for sure um, we don't even know if the governments of the world know anything like 100% sure they might, but we don't, but we can't say that yet. Um, I think it's going to be super exciting to see what Avi finds and what this AI intelligence finds, because right. they've both kind of said like this information will be available to the public. So I'm just looking forward to the future because they're, we're only going forward. Do you know what I mean? Like people are kind of cynical about it and all this stuff. But I think that if they really like looked at the history of UAP, besides being an ancient carvings and such, uh, yeah. this is the most serious that it's been in a very long time. And it's just amazing that the world is finally realizing like, hey, we're part of this too. Even if it's a small scale, like what you witness in San Marino is like, it's almost like when a sail divides, it's only going to grow from there. Well, it was crazy. huge. It was huge. Yeah, it, you know, this is the first time in history uh that uh officials from different countries get together and talk uap that that hasn't happened at all you know th th this is big this is actually history in the making and i felt it over there you know it was very special very special yeah yeah and then you got to hear you read basically the uh defense act with lou like what was that like when you saw it like you saw because they had like like wow, having yeah. that even in a rough draft the points on there were just insane. Like, what were you like feeling like? What were you thinking? Like, <laughs> look, I'll, 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 I'll sketch the, the, the situation for you. <clears throat> I was about, about to go live with Lou for the second time. And uh, we were in this hotel lobby with horrible uh, Wi-Fi, by the way. Sorry for that. <laughs> um, but he just grabbed his phone and he says to me, you, you, you will not believe what just came in. And I was like, what? And he's like, you're going to have this scoop right now. And uh, that, that's when he pulled out uh, the, the uh, NDAA. Um, um, it was like 40 something. Or it had like the, yeah. Yeah. 40, 40, so I'm trying to think. It was, it was just amazing. You know, it was basically, it, it was incredible. It, it was the government actually recognizing the phenomenon is real. It was 
uh, one, uh, you know, starting real research uh, and 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 keep on researching what the hell this is. This this was just historic. What happened? Uh, you know that what, what the government uh, just dropped at that time at that moment. Yeah, I would imagine the people that were composing it also were kind of like because a lot of the people are fairly conservative. They don't necessarily most of them that are not out. Of, maybe they do, but like you know. In the public eye, they're not going to talk about this. So I think that maybe there was a good handful of people or more that were doing their job, doing normal fiscal year stuff, like oh, the army gets this, you know, um, you know, all the normal things, right? And defense yeah. gets this, this much money. And they're doing their normal thing, and all of a sudden, there's this like, wait, what? 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 What are we adding in here? Uh, UAP or UFO? You know, and so many people. I just, I don't know, to be a fly in the wall there because. It almost seems like once they found out and they wrote, you know, that verbiage and then they kind of did the the FY for, you know, the fiscal year 2022. Yeah. Thing came out, re- like, you know, what, like this week or last week. It's just like, I feel like they were kind of like demanding. They're probably like just as confused as we are. Like, you know, they, they want right. to know the truth, too. Like we've been working in this government for so long in many branches of the government. And yeah. you need to do this. Like they're requiring it. Like the language in it is just so like very I mean, demanding. Paper, so obviously it's gonna be clear, or maybe not. But you know, um, just the fact that they are like, you have to do this. Like it's out there. Anybody can look at this document, and people are voting on it, and it's made public. Like it's wrapped in with all the other things we're spending money on. So to right. me, I'm just like, this is like, I don't know. I just get like this excited feeling because so many people were made to feel like idiots these whole year, like since the '40s. People's lives have been like ruined over this stuff. You see, um, right. Mr. Day talking from you know the like the the Tic Tac uh, the Nimitz Encounters documentary. He's emotionally affected by this. Yeah, Kevin Day. Yeah, he yeah. PTSD. Yeah. So every time I see him talk, I'm just like, he basically said like he had to like stop doing what he was doing because of it because it just it rocks people. Do you know what I mean? And it rocks mm-hmm. people in a good way. Like so many people have these experiences. Like um, your experience felt pretty good, right? When you saw them yeah yeah it was just like that more you but isn't it crazy did you just sit down that night and because i still do this i've seen quite a few and i've had some crazy experiences but oh i keep on seeing them now yeah that's what i was gonna say like once you see one yeah. it's like they know you're available to see them so they just like pop up <laughs> i i yeah there is something there, there's like a switch um but you know if you if you really start looking which is what you do when you cover the shit, <laughs> and then the <laughs> then then you start uh, looking at the skies and maybe we didn't look you know that could be a thing too you know or you d- don't know what you are looking for or what to look at right and, and your yeah. mind plays tricks on you it it almost immediately starts explaining or just won't register maybe but once you know um you are aware um yeah yeah you start noticing shit <laughs> yeah it's, uh, so. it happens with like spirituality too like I know people are kind of like right now people a lot of people have been coming to me and you know from like everyday friend life and um people i haven't talked to in years like they see something and i don't know if it's just like you said people are looking up more because it's been brought to the public's attention or you know people just are maybe expanding more with like their this is going to sound weird energy field Mm. so maybe they're picking up on like hey i should look up or or it is all linked to consciousness. And now this is something the ancients have known, right? Like we have this connected consciousness with everything. And this goes all the way back yeah. to Samaria, maybe even before that. But yes. people will just have this connectedness to our earth. And why wouldn't we be connected to everything else? Because we're all these little, we're basically empty space when you get down to it, the smallest, you know, <laughs> thing. Yeah, con- look, consciousness, uh... <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. I hear this from uh, from uh, some very important people. Is a real thing uh, with UAP. Um, so there will be more about that. It's probably it's gonna probably need a lot of more science, and it's gonna take a while. But the anti gravity and consciousness that that is something that goes hand in hand, definitely. Yeah, it's pretty insane to think about. Back to like the you know multi dimensional theories and other dimensions. Like they don't. Like from what I've read, yeah. I'm not a physicist, obviously. Sitting, you know. <laughs> Look, we the, the the thing is, you know, people are now, uh, you know, we're very still a primitive life form, and we're trying to comprehend uh, what what time and space really is. We just don't really know, uh, right? Um, right. So, and because of the phenomenon, 
yeah there's a a, a, a much louder a, a much noisier call now for uh, for researching that because it's it's probably going to help us evolve too you know our consciousness well, yeah. and, and in a weird way uh it was something that was much more uh, important to humankind uh, thousands and, and thousands of years ago right. before the bi- before the big uh, monotheist, uh, monotheistic uh, religions um for example i talked about this with truth seeker the other day that uh for example the first jews um you know uh, like kabbalah which is jewish mi- jewish mysticism yes um kabbalah comes from um uh, shamanism from the region yeah. right so yeah. the people who started to believe in just one god you know they they worship nature they worshiped um the, the the energy connecting everything and funny enough you know thousands and thousands of years later this <laughs> could be the key to uap disclosure you know it was something that is just in, embedded in our dna maybe literally we don't know it because of our like oh we just have a bunch of junk dna like i feel like i i took genetics in uh, when i was attending university in alaska and right after we learned all this stuff like right. maybe like a couple months later and this is going to be horrible they're probably gonna come arrest me i used to steal scientific magazines because i'd make sure they were the older ones like a month or two but like to get a right. subscription that's like super expensive like yeah, yeah. that's like a 200 dollars subscription to get you know these science magazines that actually have articles in them so if one so you borrow them I would take it. So, um, so yeah, like I was kind of in the lab when all that CRISPR stuff was like just kind of coming to surface, you know, the gene editing. And yeah. I was like, we just finished like, you know, and then something else came out after that. And like, they're basically, oh yeah, we really don't know how um, these certain genes combine. I'm like, well, I just learned how they combine in genetics, but now you're changing it again. I just feel like we keep learning more and more like about ourselves. And in some sense, like we are as deep like our genetics and us are as deep within as the universe is, you know, spacious outwards. So you're right. It's going to lead to a lot about us. We don't know why we feel certain things. We don't know why we have faith in certain things, or we don't know why we have like uh, the drive to know more about ourselves and by learning about these other beings and consciousness related things. Very interesting. I talked to Lance Merja uh, the other day, uh, who's a, a filmmaker uh, he made a film, a documentary actually called um, um, uh, Third Eye Spies uh, about remote viewing. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. So there you go. You know, that's consciousness. That's taking your consciousness to a place and, um, you know, the, with fascinating results, actually, you know. Uh, and it was a real uh, secret service uh, thing for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so, and people they, have found like papers through the you know freedom of information act um relating yeah. to that have yeah, you practiced yeah. any remote viewing yourself i try i try uh but uh well i i think i basically have been doing that for like my whole life actually without knowing it was remote viewing i always um have a thing i did whenever i want to reach whenever i want to reach a goal or or uh, get something done i picture it in my mind i condition it basically i, I release the energy do the work though you know it's not yes, going to be handed to you but uh yeah I, I it's it's a form of meditating uh on what you want but then again i have a very strong connection uh with loved ones i can sometimes uh feel when something's not right or when someone's extremely sad or or not very happy um i I pick up on that it's weird i've I've had that all my life i think that's good so you're an intuitive person so you probably you but you also like the training part comes in because you're also very athletic and you've done you've done some uh martial arts correct oh yeah yeah Yeah, that's very that fighter mentality i think that that all played into it for you do you think it did like what kind of like i don't know i just feel like you you're so well-rounded like you have like you're able to pick up on people's energy so you're an empath i know a lot of men don't like to hear that but you're an empath and then I you am. have like your warrior side and i just feel like the balance between masculine and feminine in you and then people think like oh i'm not feminine but like like our feminine sides like our you know your intuitive side when it comes to like spiritualism and your masculine yeah. side like you know uh, more analytical yeah, sure. I I, I don't want to, you know, uh, make it black or white like it's masculine or feminine. No, yeah. I, I think it, it's human. 
yeah and, exactly uh, we we don't have to categorize what what is what you know um i think i'm not especially more masculine if uh if, if i'm a warrior i think there's a lot of cool chicks who are oh yeah definitely g- goddamn warriors you <laughs> know those uh, female boxing matches i'm like dang <laughs> or the ufc fights with the females yeah look at ronda rousey yeah, oh I yeah she's amazing. I, I wouldn't st- I wouldn't step with, in the ring with her. No, no. <laughs> I don't care what you pay me. I'm not. Uh, yeah, her story is really interesting too. <laughs> very, very interesting. But then again, you know, I, I, it, I think when a when a man is receptive to emotions or picking up on things, that doesn't make you a sissy. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I had a yoga teacher that was more into the spiritual. It wasn't just yoga for exercise. Like, don't don't get me wrong. Like, he had he had you exercising. When you do vinyasa yoga, it's like up and down and up and down. And you're like, why am I holding a squat for like three minutes? Um, this sucks. <laughs> Chair pose yeah. forever. But he would right. talk like a little bit about philosophies. Like you want to be like the Shaolin monks. They had this belief of, you know, the trees being flexible, but also strong. And you can't right. just be like too one-sided or like if the wind blows, it's going to snap you. You have to be flexible in order to be strong at the same time. And I yeah. think what I was trying to say is we have people selling this information when it's inherent to us like the whole masculine feminine energy has been you know depicted in many many pantheons and belief systems but you know the yin yang for example kind of does that and it's just funny that right. people are like selling this now like it's some new discovery i know it has to be repackaged for certain people but yeah. sometimes i wonder if our ancestors are like really you just figured this out like <laughs> like we need yeah to- yeah <laughs> yeah well you know people we were actually spoiled by our own technology, you know, there, there's a lot of things you don't have to uh, put much effort in uh, for anymore, uh, right? So if you want to uh, uh, get some knowledge about something or, um, you know, if you if you want to learn more about, in the old days, you know, you have had to be way more creative and, and um, you know, uh, and, and then, I think is why people were much more connected to their surroundings, to each other. Um, yeah, and it, it 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 was more of a of an exchange of energy back then. You don't you don't focus on exchanging energy uh, anymore in the, these times. But yeah. then again, you know, people like you and me, and we we are trying to look into it without really trying to to understand the dynamic the the yeah the, the 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 physics or how it really works it just for me sometimes you don't have to understand everything to get it done or or yeah. try it or, or or do it uh it's very intuitive and that's fine too that's great i think a lot of people are like that they should be like that i'm meeting more people like that i should say but you're right yeah. like uh, we don't see people in person anymore um half the people i talk to over half the people i talk to that are like-minded i've never met in person you know and it's just it's crazy to think that like we have this big energy or we have like our own electromagnetic field and like we don't connect with each other's electromagnetic fields anymore we're so separated because you know covid and technology we don't really have to remember things anymore like i had a friend that like lost his phone he's like oh man i had to remember my girlfriend's number today i was like how'd that go for you <laughs> did you remember yeah. it or are you just lost um yeah. so it's just nuts that we really don't think i remember like i'm old enough to remember having to go to the library and find books and the little you know ask the librarian and now you just tell you press the button and you tell siri and she gives you all this stuff to look up on it right yeah yeah but the intuitive thing is it's for everybody i just i always get i think i get triggered when i see people selling it honestly because there's yeah. a meditation class you could take like um like you know like not the Dave, david lynch foundation is actually reasonably priced but we have the other ones that do the hemi sync like the monroe institute like a little me right. i was like oh maybe i'll take one of their classes and re- refine my meditation technique and i looked and it's like two thousand dollars <laughs> for like to an online class and I get right. like, yeah, you have to like the energy exchange, energy exchange is energy is money. Money is energy in our world. You know what I mean? Like it's an energetic exchange because yeah. you have to pay. It's It's been made to be that way. Like you can't just like trade. Um, I'll right, trade you right. for that anymore. No, here's a chicken <laughs> <laughs> or something. Yeah. 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 So Kabbalah, you mentioned that last time we were talking, I think when I think Sean was on and Vinny was on. Have you studied sure. much of the uh, Kabbalah or is it something that you've dabbled in or do you practice it? 
Um, uh, I, I did dive into it for a while. Um, and I picked up on, on some things that I'm very uh, interested in and uh, feel very connected to. Uh, the tree of life metaphor, for example, I think that is very important um, for for us and very um, symbolic for for how energy and being connected to your surroundings and, and other people works, right? Um, we've talked about the tree. Uh, the tree means there's uh, stuff you see above ground, like uh, uh, the, the branches and the, the leaves. But what's keeping the tree up are the roots that's under, uh, uh, that are underground. Um, but you cannot see those, right? And yeah. there's a lot we cannot see that keeps, uh, uh, you know, you, you as a person up. Uh, uh, your your roots are uh, can can be anything you know your your Native American heritage, uh, your dad is so and so, um, you know your 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 family is from uh, that place. Everything is connected, and even generations down, uh, you do don't need, do, do not even know the story of. Yeah, so there's a lot you you cannot see, but it's important for you uh, and what you are, who you are. So yeah. I, I feel like whatever it is, um, it's in some way connected to us, right? Um, but we cannot see it, really see it. We know it's there, but we that there is something going on here. It's very in interesting. Yeah, I think we live in a very interesting time, actually. You know, um, for example, we are the generation, um, you know, that saw the internet being born. Um, you know, it, it is just a hundred years ago that people started flying planes, driving cars. Um, you know, with a push on a button, you have access to all information, you know. And how come that I am in that generation and not the ones thousands and thousands of years before me that, you know, uh, are in this key time for, for humans? And now, you know, there's there's uh, actually the discovery of UAP, and we're we're finding out what what the hell it is. So I think we're blessed. We're blessed to live in these times to 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 get to see the important existential stuff. Absolutely, and it's just as simple as some people. You know, there's a whole talk that's people are like, oh, well, extraordinary claims and extraordinary beliefs, but the term extraordinary can be relative, right? Like yeah. I've talked to people after their first uh, spirit experience or their first UAP experience and to them just seeing that in the sky and feeling that connection is extraordinary and yeah. some people have to have it in their hands and see it in math and paper and I just I know everybody's different but I have to wonder if the people that have to have the facts and they only trust things that they can see and touch is it do you think it's a lack of faith in like the way things work or is that just kind of how their brains are wired where some people can just kind of have the experience and accept it and other people want to like pick it down and analyze it it's just is it yeah. what's the balance between having to know know and see versus having a little faith in the way things work that you can't see like you just said mm. yeah so it's complicated <laughs> yeah it's complicated and it, it's also a little bit of a leap of faith right you know you, you're gonna have to try uh or yeah, you, uh, you, you cannot disqualify anything without having tried it, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always open to trying uh, things. And I'm, I know <clears throat> what I've experienced. I know what, what, what is uh, intuitive uh, and works with me. Um, and I always respect, um, I think you have a troll in your chat, by the way. Oh, uh, do I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which one? Let's see. the uh grandmaster guy yeah oh i see him like all over the place honestly uh I just yeah yeah he's just I, I see him all over the place honestly just making off the wall things yeah you can so, block him how do i do that sorry i'm new to all this uh... yeah on the side if you uh oh there it is Sorry, Grandmaster, you're being kind of trolly. Yeah, you're you know. big. Yeah, now I'm seeing more. I kind of, I think that I'm zeroing in on like Wilfred and Yanni and all the people, you know, I know on here. But yeah, I've seen them, that guy, in lots of chats actually. And I kind of yeah. just thought he was just kind of like jesting a little bit, but 
uh, yeah, sometimes, yeah, I've noticed him before in other places. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Good. you got to be a little more respectful in the chat to people. I'm not big enough to have a moderator. So, <laughs> but thanks for pointing no, that out. Yeah, no, you, you were saying some really, really, really weird shit. So, um, but uh, yeah, let's not talk about him anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> I do like the way you call out people on your channel, though. Like, you were interviewing Avi, and somebody was in there like, well, he's ignoring my emails. And the way you read his comment, I was like, you were killing me, though, because you have a way of, like, poking fun, but not taking it, like, overboard. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, I, I like... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I like to, you know, whenever somebody uh, um, has it coming, you're going to get it. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, but I'm always to work on looking at both, you know, comments and talking to people. So yeah. what I sorry, I keep talking this time. Um, no, I do no, have no, to ask, I, so what made you okay, what is when you first started researching this subject, what case kind of like sucked you into the rabbit hole? Because everybody has that one. I think everybody has that one like point in their life where they're like, this is where I started. Like, this is where I started researching this. And I haven't stopped since. What point it was that I, I didn't want to stop anymore with uh, the yeah. research? Like, what was what was the one thing that drew you into the um, the subject of UAP? Like, what what made you like go down the rabbit hole and not come out? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it definitely not want to come out was you know the, the New York Times uh, drop because you know th that was you know this is something real and um, yeah, it was a, a message to the world. You know, UAP is is here. It's 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 not a joke. And this was the DOD saying that uh, the Pentagon, yeah, as a journalist, you know, that that to me, to me, that was the biggest thing ever, um, you know, because if we are not alone, that is going to change history. That's going to change mankind. Um, it, it, you know, it, it will influence religion. It's going to uh, make us doubt a lot of our, um, uh, how do you call it, um, axioms, right? The, the things you knew before to be true. Are, is now in doubt. <clears throat> so to me, that was very big. But what I underestimated was that people don't like change. So that, that is why there was so much resistance to, uh, you know, this news coming out and uh, media being very hesitant to to cover it. Um, but, you know, there there were a few who did cover it. Um, yeah, I was a little one, uh, a little part of that. Uh, but in, in the, the US, uh, a couple of people too. You know, people don't like to hear it, but Tucker Carlson, uh, Fox News, whatever you think of the guy, you know, he had the the the, the cojones to uh, to to cover yes. that on, on national mainstream media. So yeah. I respect that, right? So it it it's people like like that, um, you know, who are so important uh, to you know not give up on on covering this and you know make it go away. So yeah. Um, so the New York that, Times did it for you, like the, yeah, the journalist. Because yeah, as a journalist, yeah. you're like, uh, you seek, like, you know, like the word media is middle, right? Like you, you really probably like, like to journalists, they want to discover something to like present because everything that you're learning could potentially be turned into like content for your podcast or for your, your news articles and everything. So that makes total yeah. sense. And that is what I refer people to that are like kind of like haters on the subject or be like, oh, well, you're weird. Um, I refer them to the Nimitz in that article and yeah. the Nimitz Encounters documentary because it just has so much data to it, really. Yeah. So why are you doing this? Like, are you doing this? Like, why? Are, why what does the passion come from for this subject? Like, why do you want the truth to be exposed? Are you doing it for a particular reason or you just think it's cool? Like, what? How do, what, is, what is your passion? What ignites it about this? Yeah, well, um, it's 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 maybe the way I'm programmed. Um, it's I I just like something that is very much um, uh, an out of the box topic, you know, and it's very um, uh, let's say it's something people get uh, nervous about. Whenever people get nervous about a certain topic, I'm interested, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> and I want to know more uh, because whenever there's a lot of, uh, let's say, man, I cannot come up with the English words today. Um, whenever there's a lot at stake uh, for on all kinds of levels, right? So we're talking state, armed forces, um, 
general public uh you know people's names are on the line here you know there there's so much at stake it's like a good movie you know um whenever there's a, a lot at stake in a movie it keeps you yeah uh seated it keeps you on the on the, on the, the edge of your seat because you know um there are people who are very afraid or scared of whatever is coming out and you know they they give a lot of uh resistance uh, and and that makes me very interested because then i know you know where there's smoke there's fire and i'm gonna look i'm gonna yeah. go all in and kind of like um, pushing them in a way that they haven't been pushed before or you know thought before yeah but then again you know i'm also very open um to finding out a truth that might not be as cool as i'd hoped for right yeah uh, but you know if 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 uap turns out to be something completely different i'm gonna cover it you know because oh, yeah. because it's, because it's the truth um yeah. but you know before both you know for now we do not know what it is and i want to know what it is and i'm yeah. not going to stop until i have some answers so that's good and that's the uh and that's why you're doing what you're doing and that's why you're good at it you know you have that drive yeah. to find out what's going on and not a lot of yeah. people have that for very long it's kind of like they're interested and they're not they're interested and they're not and then like you said like it might not be what we think like what if they are here to like kill us all you know or what if they're you know what if it is some weird thing that we don't know about that a government has and they just hit it very well but yeah, yeah. I, i'm with you on that and i will be following it till we find out i'm emotionally invested too but if it did come out that um what we've been saying isn't as cool as we're all hoping it is um then i'm gonna have to acknowledge that too because you can't I think like the normal person or not the normal person, but in order to be like uh, in this phenomena, studying it and engaging with the people that are studying it as well, you have everybody says you have to have the healthy amount of skepticism, because yeah. if you're too emotionally invested, you're going to believe everything that you see. And I know people like that, they'll they'll be like, oh, this is real. And I'm like, that doesn't look real at all. Like the CGI is bad. There's like, you know, like, it's pixelated. It's not real, you know, um, and there's all these weird things in the video that don't make sense, but they want to believe it so bad. And it stirs so much in people that you want them to know the truth. Um, yeah. And I think we're getting there for sure, especially with people, you know, that are pressing forward with the subject and it's in Congress now. And then the San Marino thing's amazing. So yeah. we're coming up on the hour. I don't want to keep you too long. I know it's like, Saturday night there. You probably got some fun stuff to do, but well, not what? tonight. I'm, I'm going to take it easy. Oh, you're going to you're going to let yourself rest tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's time awesome. for some rest so, for me. You have an open invitation to the book club. I know you might not have time to read Graham's book, the you know the UFO before Roswell book, but oh, you're I'll send me the link in case you want to hop on. Um, it's going to be <laughs> the 16th. Sure. And we're going to have Graham, Vinny's going to come. And then at the end, we have, obviously, Graham's going to be there. Um, yeah. Sean's going to be there. I said Graham twice, but, you know, <laughs> Graham and Graham, yeah. Graham, Graham. But at yeah. the end, we have Dan is going to come talk about the artwork, like the last 30 minutes, 20 minutes or so. Awesome. And yeah. I, like, was afraid to message Olaf because I hadn't talked to him before. And I've right. talked to Dan um, for random reasons, but. Uh, he's agreed to come on too. So we'll have the artist there talking about like the art. So I'm super excited. I'll send you a link so you can join us. Cool. Uh, what do you have coming up this next week? Um, I'm having um, Paolo Grisardi, who is the head of the Italian uh, ICER. Um, I so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the 14th. Um, uh, he's going to be on my show. And um, we're going to talk about we're going to talk more about the Mussolini uh, UFO, the Mussolini That's UAP. There, 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 there might be some cool new things you get to uh, hear. Um, and of course, we're going to talk some more about San Marino, uh, because I met Paolo in San Marino, actually. Um, he's a very interesting guy. Um, and um, there's something pending with uh, Gary Hesseltine, oh, wow. the British head of ICER. Yeah. And, and I have something up uh, my sleeve uh, from San Marino still. Yeah, uh, you've been teasing everybody on that. We're like, more to come, more to come. <laughs> yeah, more to come. It, 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 the problem is it takes a little bit of editing, but uh, I'm oh, almost yeah. done. And that will be an, a really cool conversation between uh, Lou Elizondo and Gary Hesseltine. Wow. Um, there's going to be some footage of the, the lecture Lou gave in San Marino. Um, yeah. And 
the biggest thing that is coming, but I, I'm not sure when I'm, uh, I'm making a documentary or a reportage kind of a thing of all the podcasts I've been doing since March. And it's a really cool timeline on the, the 180 day ultimatum. And it's really cool. Uh, uh, basically uh, highlights um, of my interviews with James Fox, Jeremy Corbell, Lou, three, four times. Um, Senator Reed, uh, Sean Cahill, Avi Loeb, um, you know, uh, John Greenwald. Uh, so I'm trying to, you know, put it all together, uh, you know, uh, uh, and make it functional for the timeline uh, yeah. that, that we're working on. So that is coming. Yeah. That sounds really cool. It's like a Max Greatest Hits, like <laughs> documentary. Yeah, yeah um, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really telling a disclosure story here, you know. But it's, uh, you know, through the the interviews. Yeah, that's good. That sounds challenging, and when you pull it off, it's going to be awesome because you've got like the <laughs> timeline to think about, and then like pulling, like you're going to have to go through all your footage. So I mean, when it does come out, it's going to be awesome because I feel like you have that gift to like, you know, bring things to life on camera. So good job on that, and I'm super excited to see it. Um, do you have anything you want to add or ask or say? I don't know. Um, maybe do you have some interesting uh, guests coming up? I, I think that the most interesting guest is going to be, um, you know, the, the book club with Graham coming on mm -hmm. and Dan and Olaf. But after that, there's a woman that was she's been in the community for a long time. Her name is Geraldine Orozco, and mm -hmm. she is an, an abductee. And she has like a website that has support groups for them. She's been on a couple of documentaries. She was the latest one. She was on the Demi Lovato. Right. So she was on that. And then she's on one that is called The Seating. And it's about the hybridization program. So I'll be okay. having her like the first week of November. And that should be interesting. And then, of mm. course, Truth Sika. Like I, I find he's going to come on like that first week. That's awesome. I'm working on some more things. I'm trying to get another medium on. I had some mediums on ladies night, um, like last Wednesday. So that was pretty cool because uh, I just feel like it's <clears> October. <throat> we need to tell spirit stories or ghost stories. <laughs> but you know, the day of the dead's in November. So I'm trying to get her like for that time frame. She's a professional medium. She teaches classes and like that's her job is a med mediumship. So I think that'll be really cool. Awesome. Sounds great. Uh, you're going to love Truth Seeker. I, I think you guys are really going to connect. Yeah, I have yeah. so many questions. He knows so much. I need somebody that knows more than me. And not that I'm not, that sounds horrible, but like about the weird, <laughs> like woo stuff and the spirituality stuff. And I just haven't found right. that person. So when he was mentioning some of the biblical texts that are like apocrypha that aren't included in the, the, the Canaan, you know, I feel yeah. like he's going to be able to answer these questions for me. Whereas I've approached so many like reverends, priests, uh, women that know the Bible backwards and forwards. They just don't want to have like the, the mystical talk about it. And since he's a Christian mystic, I think that he's going to actually be able to have like uh, the conversation that I've been looking for for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. When I was talking to, to him, I was thinking of you. I was like, oh, Priscilla should really talk to this guy, right? I, I thought I was so sad that I missed the live. I was like, oh, I missed it live because I saw him. So when you were having him, I like looked him up and I was like, oh, it's that guy. Like, so cool. Yeah. I, I, I you know, I stumbled upon him, but, um, you know, he actually has he's a pretty big platform, uh, you know, he's, he's a, oh, yeah. a rising star. But then again, he's a, to me, he was a complete new face. And uh, he's not very known in uh, the UA, UFO community. So, I hope uh, me and you get to uh, introduce uh, Truth Seeker a little bit because he brings something very uh, special to the table. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, it's going to be good. And thank you for bringing him on your show because I was like, I wouldn't have known he was that cool if you didn't interview him. Yeah, I, yeah. well, you know, sometimes you, uh, yeah, the leap of faith, but it worked out very, very nicely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was great. So uh, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I have your... You information i should have your information in the description but i'm sure everybody knows where to find you but if not it'll be in the description and thank you I, so much for taking the time out of your saturday to you know chat for an hour on my channel yeah anytime anytime i really enjoy our, our conversations and uh by the way i changed my uh youtube channel's name it's not uh Vechte met Moskvich anymore because it's i i can't waterboard you guys anymore <laughs> trying to, to pronounce say, like, that. Kind of by myself i'm like <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like I'm choking when I try to say it. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to find me on YouTube, it's uh, just the uh, Moscovich podcast. Uh, okay, I think I can more... see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, uh, that's my Twitter uh, account. And, uh, you know, you can uh, find my YouTube channel through my Twitter easily. So. All right. Well, thank right. you for everybody coming. Um, Laura, I'm going to jack this up. Since you've been Wilfred, Yanni, of course. I love Yanni. And then thank you, Mr. Troll. Hopefully you're not like um, DMing nasty things to me or about me. But <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you on Instagram and Twitter for sure. Yeah.